Why on earth would any company make a 24-inch monitor this good? I'm sorry, a 25-inch monitor this good. A 24.5. Why do they do this to me? They say it's 25-inch, but it's actually 24.5. That's it. I'm sick of it. All right, so we're looking at the 25M2S from NOCN. I've had really good luck with their products in the past. And this is a kind of stupid level monitor for a 25 inch monitor first off it's 1440p which i feel like is at the threshold of of what i would consider uh the lower size to have that high of a resolution if that makes any sense i like 1440p at 27 inch at 25 inches it's for my eyes it looks like 4k it, you know, th what i mean by that is i don't see the pixels at all you're gonna see the pixel grid a little bit because i'm shooting this video with a 4k camera and I've got the 4K camera close enough that you can see the pixel grid because there are not as many pixels on the monitor as there are in the camera. So don't get in the comments and be like, I can see the pixels. Sure, the camera can see the pixels, but you, you ain't gonna be able to see that pixel grid, but it's there and you can see it in the thing. So yes. I always use OEM keys. I grab them over at whokeys.com. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro if you get a retail key. Let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30 and a we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go. 2322. You got Windows 11 Pro, Windows 10 Pro, Windows 11 Home, Windows 10 Home, and we have a couple different flavors of LTSC. 2021 gets updates until 2027 and the 2021 IoT edition gets updates until 2032. Also, if you're sick of paying that monthly fee for Office, you can get an offline version of Office. They've got 2019 and 2016. You know, 2016 will get most people by, in my opinion. You can also use the coupon code TS25 on these to save 25% on this as well. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. I right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on view keys and codes. Once you get to the user center, click on get the key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press start, and then type activate. You'll see activation settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here, it says not active. Just click on change product key. Place in our product key and then click on activate. Hey, look at that, active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. This also has HDR 1000 and that's you know we're getting into some decent levels of hdr once you get it tuned up and everything the blacks are decent it doesn't have that washed out gray look so let's cover what we're looking at right here i'm just going to play a bunch of games as well and i'll talk about some new games right now you're you're looking at the outer worlds 2 that just came out and i feel like this is what starfield should have been so i'm going to run around here in this first part uh first mission because it's beautiful we got the ray tracing turned on and it's really bright but i i like how this looks in hdr because it's so colorful so that's what you're looking at right here, just me running around in 240 hertz on top of all that with a one millisecond response time. And we do have adaptive sync that also works with, with G-Sync. So you can turn that on and off if you want to. Now, since this is mini LED, let me explain how this works. We have local dimming mini LED, and I'll explain that in just a second as well. A uh, thousand nits is our peak brightness. And the contrast ratio when you're using HDR is 2.5 million to one like why does it look so good why do they do this that's just too much for a 25 inch screen that's just insanity so the way this works is we have an array of mini leds back here instead of having uh, you know a couple zones of backlighting or whatever we have tons of individual leds now it's also not going to strobe on and off because that was a thing a lot of leds they what was that? <laughs> they strobe on and off. These don't. They dim. They're not going to bother your eyes. It's not going to have any sort of flicker. And that also makes it look a lot smoother, in my opinion. So, yeah. They advertise 240 hertz and uh, 1 millisecond response time. However, you can actually uh, enable overdrive and put it up to 250 hertz. That's not really going to change the, uh, the ghosting or anything, if so, if there is any. But let's go ahead and check it out. With mini LEDs, it's very, it, well, it's been very minimal. I haven't looked at these pictures yet, so. All right, so with ghosting, I'm playing Dusk here. I just run around and flail around as much as possible. And what we're doing is we're looking for images that double and blur around the edges. So we zoom way in. And you normally see it when there's something dark and something bright because that pixel or that um, you know LED or whatever is going to have to turn on and off. So right there you see it. Uh, as I'm swinging the camera around, you see a ghost image right there. Um, with a lot of older IPS and AHVAA panels, you'll see I've literally seen ghosted images all the way to over here, like a one, 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 like there's like six images. So that's pretty minimal and you don't see it that often. Let's see if I can find another one. 
I like to flail around right there a little bit, see the where the, the light is in the dark. But this is extremely minimal. Again, I've seen stuff that's like way out to here. So that's not gonna be that noticeable when you're running around in the game. Very, very close to the levels of motion clarity that you get when we're talking about OLED and stuff. So yeah, insanity. You know, they've got all these game assist functions and stuff. I don't use these, but I'll just show you what they've done here because this is actually kind of interesting that you have that reticle that they put on the screen. Well, they have now set it up so that the reticle will change color based upon what's going on on the screen. And the reticle is also local to your screen. So if you're streaming or something, no one's gonna see that reticle, you little cheater. All right, let's talk about the stand. Um, because the stand, you know, it it doesn't feel extremely heavy duty or anything, but it really works and it's solid. Um, you know, it's, it's a plastic stand with some metal core in the middle and it snaps on, just a regular Visa mount right there. But, um, it, it can go up and down pretty 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 well but we have quite a bit of travel there when it comes to um how much we can move this up and down you can see like quite a bit and then we have a five to 20 degree tilt there is no uh swivel on this but we can also pivot it 90 degrees so if you want to use this as a vertical monitor by all means you can do that 2560 by 1440 vertical monitor. Yes, that would be awesome. Three of these to make a giant wall to play some games and surround or whatever. Yes, by all means, except for the large bezel on the bottom. Above and beyond all that, they've included a little cable uh, routing piece of plastic thing that you snap onto the back. Works just fine. And then we have some some RGB LEDs on, on both sides of the back to give you some ambiance. And you can turn that on and off in the menu. Then we have two three watt speakers and the speakers sound much better than I expected. This is your high ground. They sound better than a lot of television speakers. They sound better than just about any laptop speakers. I wasn't expecting these little three watt speakers to, you know, sound this good, but they do. As far as the ports go, well, you got your power port right there. Then we have our display port 1.4 that'll max out at 240 Hertz. That's the one you're gonna wanna use for heavy duty stuff. And then we have HDMI 2.0. Point one, and that'll do 144 hertz. Then we have an audio out for, I don't know, headphone speakers, whatever you want to plug up. Also, the newest game from Double Fine just came out. This is Keeper, and I wanted to show this on the screen just because the HDR and the, the, the gameplay on this, it looks crazy. I don't know, the game so far feels a little bit like a walking simulator, but it's so beautiful. Play it like a movie. Don't play it like a game. Play it like an experience. Play it one time through like an experience. But yeah, just look, look at this game. Anyway, so that's Keeper show you a few other new things that I, I was recently sent over. Neon Inferno is one of the best pixel art games I've ever seen. And when you play it back on a screen that has a contrast ratio like this, it looks ridiculous. Now, Neon Inferno, I'm not going to get into the plot or anything, but I'm trying to play it with a keyboard here, which is the wrong way to play it. But at first I thought, oh, it's going to kind of be like Metal Slug. No, 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 no. This is much more modern. You have all of the modern fixins. We're talking like roll to dodge. We're talking like deflecting the green stuff, kind of like uh, the, the latest Doom. Why, why is it, what's up with that? Being able to deflect the green stuff. So you could deflect that, but if you hold down the button when you deflect it, you can, you know, change the trajectory of your stuff using bullet time. So you got bullet time, and then we can also use a different button to shoot enemies in the background. And then it becomes almost like, uh, uh, what do you call those games? Like a light gun game where you're like aiming up and down House of the Dead or something. So you've got all these different things and you got to manage it all at the same time. But once you get a hang of the uh, buttons, it, it's cool. But anyway, it just, it just looks really good on this. So I wanted to, to check it out. I think Neon Inferno is going to be uh, going to be cool. And one more game I wanted to give everyone a heads up on is um, the new Siberia Remastered just came out and they have redone everything. If you haven't played Siberia, um, I just I'll show you a little bit of it on the screen, but it's it's a click adventure. It's uh, one of the things I like about it is almost everything in the game that makes you do stuff. You're interacting with everything. It's one of the most interactive uh, click adventures out there. You don't just open a door, you pick up a key and then open the door. You don't just ring a bell. You uh, pick up a thing, wind up a thing and press a button. It's like you use your head and you're always engaged. Anyway, I'm not going to get into the plot, but if you've played the original Siberia, well, it, check this out. They redid so much of it, but it still has a bit of that retro vibe, and I think it looks pretty good. So here's a little bit of the first of that game. Um, if you've never played it and you want like a good adventure to get immersed in, uh, yeah, this is what you play.
Right, so there's a few new games, just seeing how they look on this, but this monitor is crazy. If you need a 25 inch, I've also looked at some bigger mini LEDs um, and they all look so good. It's ridiculous. Like I got, I, I, oh, you know, OLED is great and all for certain things, but I really like these mini LEDs. I also didn't notice any uh, weird blooming or anything on this one. So yeah. Anyway, let me know what you think of the 25M2S. I don't know. I wish I had more negative stuff to say. I feel weird, but whatever. It's a good monitor. Thanks, NOCN. See you in the comments.